This is just about the last place in the world I ever wanted to set foot in again. Especially on Halloween. The last time I was here, how long has it been? I came but a hair's breadth away from losing my closest friends, my honor, and my life. I've spent the months since trying to forget the tortures I endured at the hands of the Lord of this dark manor. He's dead now, but there's always the possibility he left me some foul legacy. For that reason, I've had my hot miners watch the place. If they saw any suspicious activity here, so much as a single light burning in the window, they were to call me. They did. My name is Captain America, and walking into danger with my eyes wide open is one of the things I do often and well. I'm not a strong believer in the supernatural. Sure, I've seen some strange things in my day, phenomena that I couldn't begin to explain, but I still believe that rational explanations exist for everything, including magic, ghosts, premonitions, the whole ball of supernatural wax. All that said, I must admit that this place, Skull House, has an atmosphere about it that makes the back of my neck itch. I know that evil is an abstract concept that cannot be perceived by the senses, but this house, as irrational as it seems, exudes an ambiance of evil. Yes. The lord of this dark manor was the most evil man I ever met. But he is dead now, and his evil died with him. Odd. I pull my hand away from the knob just as I'm about to touch it. Why did I do that? Caution? Or fear? Buck up, man. This is a heck of a time for you to lose your nerve. The door swings open with the sort of creep you'd find in an old Boris Karloff movie. I should have remembered the WD-40 oil. What? No guillotine blade? Barrage of daggers or whirling saw blades? You'd think I wasn't expected. And there he hangs. Johann Schmidt, better known as the Red Skull. The man was a lot of things in his lifetime, all of them bad. This portrait doesn't do him justice. He first became notorious in Nazi Germany during World War II. The skull became such a potent symbol for the cause of Nazism that some anonymous bigwig in the U.S. War Department came up with the idea of creating a counter symbol to represent freedom and liberty. That symbol was Captain America. I was chosen to be that symbol. Me, the sole survivor of the government's project to create a super soldier. I guess you could say that in a way Captain America owes his existence to the Red Skull. It's a debt I repaid every time I smashed one of the Skull's malevolent schemes. With any luck, I smashed them all. The life work of a madman is now nothing more than some old machinery in a dilapidated house. Still, no sign of anything suspicious. His library, his laboratory, even his Rathskeller, still and dark and silent. The lights the neighbors reported could have been vandals or kids playing. And here is the unholy heart of the mansion, the Red Skull's bunker. It was here that the Skull and I fought our final battle. It was here he died. The last time I climbed these metal stairs, I bore his lifeless body in my arms. I recall collapsing in the corridor outside the door, weak from the poisons the Skull injected me with. I don't know how I pulled through, but I did. And soon after I came to, the Red Skull's daughter claimed his body. I gave it to her without a fight. I wonder what she did with it. Bury it? Burn it? Mummify it? I wonder where the Red Skull's body is now. Huh? A light. Searing my gloom-accustomed eyes with its brilliance. I tense. Hold my shield before me and assume a battle stance. Something appears to be swirling. Coalescing in the center of the light. What kind of clever trick is this? I'm anxious to know. 
The light dims a bit, and what I see makes my blood run cold. Greetings, my old enemy. Welcome back to Skull House. That voice. I'll recognize it to my dying day. It's the Red Skulls. And he looks exactly like he did when we last clashed. What's going on here? I stand my ground. So far, the apparition of my old foe has not made a threatening move. I wait. Nice trick, whoever you are. A superstitious person might indeed believe you are the Red Skull back from the dead. Not me. You're undoubtedly some imposter, or perhaps a hologram programmed by my late foe. I do not fancy talking to you on a staircase. If you wish to continue our little reunion, join me in my rascala. He turns, about to leave. Your face, Skull. Let me see your real face. Why, certainly. Satisfied? I'm not sure why I had him, or it, do that. A hologram could have been programmed with both of his visages. Come now. The lower half of his body becomes a wispy trail. I bound up the stairs four at a time and slice at the swirling air where he stood. <laughs> if anyone had truly been here, he wasn't here now. I check the landing and doorframe for a hologram projector. None in evidence. That still doesn't rule out the possibility. The only possibility I'm ruling out is that the skull is back from the dead. Whatever I saw invited me to the Rathskeller, you can bet it's a trap. But it's one I'm going to have to face in order to get to the bottom of this sham. When I enter the Rathskeller, I find him waiting for me. He's sitting at the same table where the two of us sat many months ago when he told me the story of his life as a prelude to our last battle. There you are. I was beginning to think you had forgotten the way. I approach cautiously. My flashlight shines through him. Come, sit down. Join me in a drink to your life and my death. I check the booth for the obvious traps and find none. Somehow that doesn't comfort me. Come now, Captain. Had I wanted to hurt you, I'd have done so by now. What I really want to do is drink and talk. I can't resist. <laughs> My shield doesn't faze him. Put that ridiculous thing down. It can't harm me now. I'm not the Red Skull anymore. I'm the Dead Skull. <laughs> Let's cut the nonsense. It's wearing rather thin. What's the point of all this haunted house malarkey? Always the skeptic, eh? You do me such injustice. Am I not your greatest enemy? Haven't I provided you with your grandest battles, your most satisfying victories, your greatest opportunities to prove your heroism? Wasn't our last battle the grandest of them all? You affirmed your superiority over me once and for all. Surely you remember how it came about. How I had my wretched daughter, Mother Superior, and her insipid playmates kidnap your Fraulein Bernadette and bring her to me. She was soon joined by three of your other closest friends, all captured similarly and consigned to my dungeon. I subjected you to rays and chemicals to accelerate your body's aging process. Was it fair that time had caught up with me, but had spared you? Not one bit! Then, with you as my prisoner as well, I administered the two of us some poison, so that when I went, I could take you with me. I propose that we spend our last few minutes alive, locked in combat. But you wanted to deny me that request and waste your final moments searching for a miraculous escape. So I forced your hand. Feigning to kill your friends, I made you abandon all hope and want nothing more than to kill me. I rejoiced. I brought you down to my level. 
but somehow you still manage to thwart me. So I beg you to do so. You refuse to snuff out my life with your own hands. No, you let the poison take me. Imagine the horror of having the last thing you ever see in this life be the sanctimonious face of your most hated enemy. What a cruel jest. Forced to concede final defeat in that way. The flames of the inferno were a welcome sight after that. The leering apparition certainly had its facts straight. That was precisely how my last battle with the Red Skull went. Wait a minute. How could the Skull have programmed the details of his own demise into the hologram machine? When would he have been able to do that? I'm still waiting for you to get to the point. My point? This. I had to live up to my own capacity for evil every day of my life, just as you have had to live up to your capacity for goodness. On my dying day, I was forced to conceive failure in my lifelong quest to corrupt you, to lead you astray from your path of righteousness. Imagine my glee when after my death, with no help from me, you proceeded to corrupt yourself and become as bad as I am, or rather was. What's that supposed to mean? Behold, Captain, do you recognize this figure? He's an agent of that terrorist group, Ultimatum. Not just any agent. He is the agent you shot and killed. Tell us about yourself, agent. I am Vladimir Korder von Krakow, 1946. Hydra agent for five years. Mercenary in Africa, three years. Ultimatum agent for five months. I was assigned to guard the 110 American hostages with orders to execute them if anyone interfered. When Captain America showed, I opened fire on the crowd. Captain America then shot me dead. I never learned the name of the agent I killed. He could have been named Corda. The memory of that incident still makes my stomach knot after all these weeks. I try not to betray any emotion. But the sight of that agent unnerves me in a way that not even the Skull's apparition can. Again, I ask you, Skull, the point. Don't you see, Captain? By committing a little evil yourself, by taking a life, you have opened the portals to perdition and given me, your perfect opposite, a little life. That's preposterous. I am now an agent of a higher power than I ever dreamed existed, Captain. The task I am charged with is one I'd never have undertaken if my will were still my own. But you see, when you tainted yourself with evil, I, your perfect opposite, was tainted with a sliver of goodness. I am here to offer you a chance at redemption for taking a life. I own it, no? And what is this alleged chance at redemption? When you murdered that ultimatum agent, you tainted yourself with evil. To cleanse yourself of that evil, you must die. And by your own hand. That's a good one, Skull. You want me to kill myself on your say-so? I know you, my old enemy. Your reverence for life and incredible will to survive render you incapable of surrendering any human life, especially your own. Your way is to never give up and keep on fighting to the end. Your destiny is to die gloriously in battle against impossible odds for the noblest of causes. So the powers I now serve have arranged for just that. Cast your eyes to the cabaret stage. Join the man you murdered are three others of your foes who, like me, died in your arms in the past few months. Modoc, the porcupine, 
The scourge of the unknown, each of them restored to a semblance of life for the sole purpose of giving you someone to battle to the death. A grand gesture, eh? Gentlemen, at your pleasure. I still don't fully give credence to the specters standing before me. But the bullets and quills that volley past me, ripping apart the boot where the skull sat, those I can't ignore. Modoc, the mental organism designed only for killing, will be the deadliest of the bunch. While the others use more conventional weaponry, Modoc strikes with his mind. The table I was standing near explodes with a single laser-like blast from that focusing crystal on his brow.